You know how it is. If you didn't go what you've gone through, you wouldn't be who you are today. And I'm not belittling your pain, and don't worry, I've seen pain in my life, and I've seen not only in my life, but people's lives, and people say, well, at least I have no arms, no legs, and then what am I supposed to say? Well, at least I'm not an African orphan who's dying at four years old, and I met that person. What about the 10-year-old girl that was bought for 700 US dollars in Mumbai and kidnapped as a sex slave to have 350 clients before the age of 13, pregnant at 12, put the baby under the bed while she works on top, abandoned by her family. After she pays her debt of 700 US dollars after three years with her child, she leaves on the streets of Mumbai hoping for a new life. No family, no job, no food. Her baby needs food. She gets raped, beaten up on the street. She comes back to the only way that she knows how to make money. She goes back to the brothels. She gets pregnant at 15 the, the second time and then that child dies and then 20 years old, she comes up to me. Yes, I have met this woman. She comes up crying. She says, Nick, I just found out I've got HIV AIDS. And I got fired from being a prostitute. What do you say to that? You may have arms and legs, but unless you know three things. Number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? If you don't know the answers of any of those three questions, you're more disabled than I. The first thing I want you to take away from today is this. You will have good days and you'll have bad days, but you will always learn something more or something new and you will learn more overall on bad days than good days. You will learn more about yourself. You'll learn more about relationships. You'll learn about life and principles and it'll build your character. If you're a person who wants, let's say, improve on your character of patience, let's say. Don't complain when you're waiting in a line. You ain't going to grow in patience until you're put in a place to wait. It's like you go into a gym and you know, you're walking through the front doors and you know, you tell your wife or your husband, I'm going to the gym. You go into the gym and you come in three feet and you do a U-turn and you ride out, I went to the gym. Ain't gonna do nothing. You gotta go in there. What are you gonna do? You gotta pick up the weights and you exercise the muscles that you wanna build. I stand before you without arms and legs, but a very strong man because of the bad days in my life. W T O H. What's the opportunity here? So you're having a bad day, maybe you had a fight with someone, maybe you lost the big sale, maybe someone cut you off in traffic and then you didn't get your favorite lunch and then you missed getting into Soul Cycle class and then you had a difficulty on the way home. So let's say that's happening, you simply run the WTOH question which will allow you to pivot. WTOH, what's the opportunity here? See there's great power in a question and it allows your brain to hunt for something good. And so how do you pivot? You ask yourself, what's the opportunity here? You have a fight with someone, let's say one of your family members. You say, what's the opportunity here? Well, your brain then starts to look for the opportunity, which is, I can learn how to communicate better. Or this is an opportunity for me to show forgiveness and grow in my personal bravery. This is an opportunity for me to understand my family member better. It's a great and powerful question. I, I worked for Miss Hughes for about eight months and I got a, a weekend gig in New York. So I would do weekdays at WOL in Washington and drive up on Fridays after my shift, which would end at seven o'clock, and I'd be on all weekend long over in Queens, that's where the radio station was located. Um, and then I would drive back to DC and I would never even stop at my parents' house, never had time for friends because everybody was kind of not understanding my dream and kind of laughing at me or something or trying to, or, you know, my friends were like real immature and stupid and wanting to party and hang out and I'm on a path and my parents were very, you know, Ooh. Do you want something to eat? What is this crazy thing you're doing called radio? I would sleep in my Subaru. They gave me a Subaru for college graduation. Um, and I, uh, I would sleep in my car at every rest stop between New York and, and Washington, D.C. to block out the noise of people 
Telling you you can't do it. Right. I would literally be, I'd have a blanket, an alarm clock, and a quilt. And I would take a bird bath in the bathroom. I'd be woken up by the man sweeping next to my Subaru looking at me, because I'm like the crazy, you know, girl in the, and I had a baby shade without a baby. Pull the baby shade down, you know? And that was my life for about two months I was going back and forth. Learning is a lifelong thing. It doesn't end at Harvard Business School. It's your responsibility. I think if you're in any profession at all, you have to do it consistently all the time. Uh, I think I spend probably 50 or 60% of my time learning, reading, talking to people, traveling. Uh, it's the only way you can keep uh, on top of this global world of ours. And it's even tougher now because of the globality of the businesses you're all gonna deal in. How reading is the most important one, but the second one, which is often forgotten, is talking to other people. You can learn more from speaking to people in 15 minutes than if you spent your life doing something. They can explain it to you, uh, and you can learn from watching people. You also are going to learn by, uh, uh, I'm gonna call it imitation, but by watching other very good people and how they operate in difficult circumstances. I learned a lot of things what not to do and a lot of things what, what to do by watching uh, other people. The main thing I, I try and tell all my friends, family, kids, is do your homework. Why do you want to compete with somebody on a level playing field? And be exactly the same, have the same chances of winning as the next guy. Well, you already know you're at a disadvantage, so you need to change the odds. You need to tilt the odds in your favor, which means you need an advantage because otherwise the next guy is gonna beat you. Now, of course, if you go to a casino and stack the cards in your favor, what happens? They throw you out, beat you up, even worse. Even worse. Even worse. In business, or in life, it's called doing your homework and being prepared. And it's what you're expected to do. Stack the cards in your favor. There's no shame in that. It's not illegal. It's exactly what you need to do in your life. You do not want to compete the same odds as everyone else. Because those of you statisticians here, is there a few statisticians? No. Okay. Nobody does numbers in Oxford. Good. That's probably the other thing I was good at, numbers. Um, you'll find out it averages out. So do your homework. Prepare yourself. Make sure you've got the advantage because it just doesn't come. And for me, every time I'd go into a deal or do I have to achieve something, I would work so hard. I would stack the cards in my favor to give me a chance of winning. And even then, Sometimes you lose, because that's a fact of life. You'll make wrong decisions. It was said earlier, the person that says he never made a mistake, never made the wrong decision, is a person that has never made a decision, or is a bloody liar. So you will get things wrong, but make sure you stack the cards in your favor. You know, in this world, and I, I, you know, the importance of actually, you know, going through the process of understanding what the problem is and then figuring it out yourself. And every now and then you need some help, that's fine. But if you get too much help, you never figure out how to do things. And you don't develop the grit. And some of the older folks in this audience are shaking their heads. Yeah, you got to have grit. And grit means getting turned away from things 14, 15 times, calling someone every two weeks, you know, every day for five months and then finally it materializing in something that you want. And discovering the joy of figuring things out means, you know, if, if you, know, for, you know, fight through those problems, understand and learn how you address those problems and come up with the answers to those, uh, come up to, with the answers to those problems in a solution that is uniquely yours. That's an important part of growing up and solving problems because if you can't solve easy problems now, you will not be able to solve difficult problems later. I have in my travels occasionally met promising young people who insist they are not going to ask for help along the way. They want to figure it out themselves. Mine was the opposite approach. It is hard enough out there. Get all the help you can. Getting help really is just a part of a lifelong search for wisdom. I always tell people, I say, the secret is, is there's certain times don't think, like when you get up in the morning, don't think.
Just roll out of bed, go in your life cycle, or go on a bicycle ride, or go to the gym, work out. You know that's what you have to do. And then read something and learn something. So mm -hmm. don't even think about it.